see what we're looking for. Beautiful. This is dog bane. We've been looking for dog bane all over here in the Klamath River Basin, but just can't seem to find it anymore. And this is the only location where I've found it. So what we're gonna do today is get some of the roots of this and transplant it along the river where it used to be. Because this is a unique plant very special. Uh, one of the common names for dogbane is Indian hemp, which is what traditionally ropes and nets were made out of. Even baskets, it's a fiber. It's a fiber material. Let me show you real quick. I'm just gonna process it real quick because because uh, I've been practicing this for quite a few years and I've gotten pretty good at it but it, basically these beautiful beautiful red orange fibers are what you're after so I'm gonna I'm gonna basically take out this inner pith because I just want these fibers You can come closer if you want to get a closer view on this. We'll call it at that. See, and and this is why we want to transplant it because these fibers should be around like six foot long instead of instead of just barely making a foot and so basically what I'm gonna do is is take that split it in half flip it upside down on itself and now we can start the next part of the process which is basically fluffing those fibers up so we because we just want to we want to get rid of that outer bark now we got rid of the inner pith and now we're gonna get rid of that outer bark which leaves us with just the fibers of the plant and so we're going to buff that real nice. And this is what we do, you know, we move a lot of plants around because <clears throat> they're just absent from where they used to be and we we want to we want to bring some equity back to the landscape. So watch this. Now now that's pretty much it. I could do a better job, but but for the sake of brevity now, now we're going to twist that till it kinks on itself and then I'm going to hold it and we're going to twist both of these the same direction. And this is a technique that takes practice, but over time you get very fast at it. And I'll reveal I'll reveal what's happening behind or underneath of my thumb. But I'm basically taking turns. I open up my thumb and index finger, twist that as tight as I can, pinch it, open it up a little, twist, open it up, twist, open it up, twist. And you can see what's happening underneath is it's making that. This is what they call twine. Isn't that beautiful? And so we'll just we'll just keep doing that. And you can get really fast at this. You can start busting out feet in a matter of minutes and 
and uh, I'm sure all of those those ancient ones back in the day got extremely skilled beyond comprehension of what even my ability so uh, it's fun just to practice and there's that rope and basically you'll go until you need some more and then you can s grab some more and splice it in there and you can just keep going and this is this can basically go on forever and and this is one of the strongest fibers this is one of the strongest fibers around here absolutely uh, some people use stinging nettle some people use milkweed and milkweed and dogbane they're they're up there uh, with each other in strength and and so when it comes to fishing nets dogbane and so right now we're gonna take time and we're gonna reveal some of these roots pull them out and there'll be a little corms attached and we're gonna transplant those along the river Here we go. So it's totally fine to just break break these roots off because because they'll continue to grow, and we can basically bury this. And it has these little nodes right here, and that's pretty much what we're after. So we'll go ahead and gather quite a few of these and transplant them along the rivers here. So I'm going to get at it. I think we got enough. Now. See at the river. We decided to transplant our dogbane in a place known as Plaithni Village. You see, this place is significant not only here locally, but also in United States history. Because in the 50s, the Klamath tribes here was terminated. And in the 70s, a man named Edison Chiliquin, in protest of his tribe's termination, refused to cash his check from the federal government. And also kept a fire going right here for nearly six years. And in the 1980s, 80, President Jimmy Carter had done something no other president had done and signed the Chiloquin Act, which left this 580 acres to Edison and his descendants. And what we're going to be doing here today is to honor Edison, his ancestors, and his descendants.
aside from me being a religious wild tender, the practical application of us transplanting dog bane to the river is that it's going to make nice long fibers, which I'm excited about. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Walking with Western Wildflowers, because we got more just like this ready for you. And we'll be coming back to check on our impact here.